Good morning, good day, or good evening. My name is Eli Rowe, and this is the Middle Aged Witch Podcast. Hello, lovely friends, and thank you for joining me today. Um, I hope everyone is feeling like we're on the other side of eclipse season and, you know, Mercury retrograde. I can't speak for anyone else, but my ass has been thoroughly kicked by all of this. I have been sicker than I've ever been. There have been family emergencies. Johnny stole about two dozen cookies off the counter and ate every last one of them. And although he is an enormous dog, he was still in a great deal of agony. Although at his big age, he should know better. He's such a piggy. But we're here. We made it. And I want to look forward rather than backwards. So what we have to look forward to today is Beltane. This is a very liminal Sabbath. Um, We can think of it sort of as, you know, Samhain's mirror image. Um, It's summer Samhain. Um, This is a great time for spirit work, um, even though we don't typically think of that at this time of year, um, but it's not without precedent, you know, in Wales. For example, um, May was when the trickster spirits and the elementals would come out to play. So there's definitely an aspect of that kind of spookiness there. And as Beltane is a fire festival, it's a great time for spooky stories around the fire pit. But first, let's give a little bit of backstory. Beltane is a Gallic May Day festival. This marks the beginning of summer. Traditionally, this is held on May 1st. And Beltane falls approximately midway between the spring equinox and the summer solstice, and it is across the wheel of the year from Samhain. Beltane was widely observed in Ireland and Scotland and the Isle of Man, and on Beltane, the cattle were driven out into the summer pastures, and rituals were performed to protect them and the people and the crops, while also encouraging growth. So this was a protection ritual and a fertility ritual. Special bonfires were kindled during Beltane. And every part of these fires, the flames, the smoke, even the ashes, were believed to have protective powers. People and cattle would walk around or between the bonfires. We actually spoke about this in previous Beltane episodes on this show before. Um, So you would walk your cattle between two enormous bonfires, and um, this was like, I don't know, know, it was was purifying. It was purifying. Sometimes people would like jump over the fires, probably the daring people, probably the young guys. Um, And household fires would be extinguished in the home before, you know, the festivities began, and then they would relight their household fires from the Beltane bonfire, which is to say, you know, folks would bring back a burning branch from the Beltane fire and then relight the hearth fire and, you know, thus granting the entire home and its occupants the same protection and purification that everybody who attended the ritual itself would receive. Um, Homes and doors and windows, even livestock, would be decorated with yellow May flowers um, because this was thought to evoke fire and also the sun. Uh, in some parts of Ireland, people would create a May bush, and this would typically be a thorn bush, um, or sometimes they would just get a branch from a thorn bush, and they would decorate it with flowers and ribbons and beautiful shells, and they would decorate their home with the with these branches and with these bushes. <clears throat> and this would sort of bring the spirit of the Sabbath into the home. And it's also a lovely way to decorate your altar. We will get to altars in a moment. Um, People would visit holy wells during Beltane and seek the healing properties of these wells. And, you know, we already talked about the fire element aspect of the Sabbath um, with the bonfires and the earth element with the flowers. And now here we come to the water element, incorporating many different natural elements into our celebrations. This is very on brand for a Sabbath. So holy wells, yes. 
Um, and even, you know, the morning dew that you would find on the flowers and the fields uh, on Beltane was very potent. Beltane dew was believed to bring um, beauty and maintain youthfulness. Maypole dancing remains a very popular tradition. You know, we've got this very tall pole representing the god's phallic energy. And it's set into the earth, and they would adorn it with ribbons and flowered garlands. And then the community would hold the ribbons and dance in a weaving pattern around the maypole, symbolizing the union of the goddess and the god. And it's just so beautifully picturesque, isn't it? Like, who doesn't want to dance around a maypole? Boring people, maybe. But not the cool people, they want to do that. And if you can't find a maypole in your community, you can certainly get into the mood by making and wearing flower crowns. Beltane is associated with romance and feasting and celebrating the return of the cycle of life and fertility. And so wearing a beautiful flower crown is such a lovely way to observe and acknowledge that. And I have to say, I know it's like probably very déclassé at this point, but I am in California. So, you know, Coachella, all of these music festivals, everybody's like dancing around wearing flower crowns. And, you know, yes, it's kind of neo-hippie and maybe it's a little bit passe, but I kind of love that. I just really feel like, I don't know, it's evocative. It's young people having a good time wearing flower crowns. Like, that's very Beltane, and I'm for it. I don't think people should be picking on these youngsters. Hand fasting um, or pagan wedding, wedding ceremonies. We also had an episode on hand fasting in the past. <clears throat> But these are traditionally held at Beltane because Beltane celebrates sexual energy and co-creation. And, you know, we've got the god and the goddess coming together in physical union after their growth over the spring. And it just aligns so beautifully with hand fastings. Now, as witches, we prepare for Beltane rituals with intention and reverence to a degree. And creativity and we can get in the right state of mind in a few ways but firstly by cleansing and purifying our homes and altar spaces so you know using incense or burning herbs to smoke cleanse those areas which incidentally is air magic just to kind of wrap it up with all the four elements <clears throat> but we can remove any negative or old stale energy that may linger and this is going to clear the way for the next phase, which is to create a sacred and energetically clear environment for our chosen Beltane rituals. So, you know, let us consider adorning our altar with symbols of Beltane, like flowers and ribbons and garlands and other items that just evoke the spirit of spring. We might incorporate colors, you know, green, yellow, pink, to represent growth and vitality and passion and we may choose to take a cleansing bath with herbs you know like lavender or rosemary and you know i love a ritual bath you know i do but this kind of a ritual helps to purify our energy and it aligns us with the season and it also helps to create a blank slate upon which to set new intentions and we can reflect on our intentions for the Beltane celebration. You know, what do we want to manifest during this very fertile time? What are we making space for? We can consider writing down our desires or even better, we can speak them aloud during our rituals. If possible, create a miniature maypole for your altar. You can use ribbons or cords to symbolize the union of masculine and feminine energies. And if we don't happen to live somewhere, where we can partake in a big maypole dance, we can simply dance around our symbolic maypoles, celebrating the balance and celebrating the harmony and the possibility of the season. And we can get deep into the spirit of it, and we should get deep into the spirit of it. And we can craft those flower crowns to wear during our Beltane rituals, wearing flowers that resonate with our intentions, dressing in colors associated with Beltane, like green and white and just pastels in general. And <clears throat> while bannock cakes are traditionally eaten at Beltane, and they're fine, 
you know, they're oat cakes and they're all right. But I found a recipe for elderberry mimosas, and I think it deserves its place at a Beltane feast. Because elderflowers are associated with Beltane, and they possess properties of exorcism and protection and healing and prosperity and just good sleep. So basically, this recipe is just an elderberry cordial that you add to champagne to make your mimosa, but I do have a recipe for the cordial, and it goes like this. You will need <clears throat> two and a half kilograms of white sugar, two unwaxed lemons. If you get lemons from the grocery store and they're waxed, just soak them in some warm water and scrub that wax right off. You need 20 fresh elderflower heads. I like 20 to 30 with the stalks trimmed and then 85 grams of citric acid. And this is frequently located near like the pectin um, and other canning ingredients and materials. So you're going to put your sugar and your one and a half liters of water into, you know, the biggest saucepan that you have. Heat it gently um, without boiling just until that sugar has dissolved. You're going to give it a stir every now and again to keep that sugar circulating until it's completely dissolved. While this is doing its thing, zest your lemons and then slice the lemons into rounds. Once the sugar has dissolved, go ahead and bring the pan of syrup right up to a boil and then turn off the heat. Then get another really big bowl, fill it with cold water. Give your elder flowers just a gentle swish around in the water. We're gonna wash them off, lift the flowers out, pat them dry very gently, and then put them in the syrup along with the lemons, the zest, and the citric acid. Give it a good stir. Cover all of that in the saucepan and leave it uh, out on the counter to infuse for 24 hours. The next day, we're going to line a colander with a tea towel, and we're going to sit it over another large bowl or just another pan, and we're going to pour the syrup in and just let it drip slowly through that tea towel. Let it do its thing. It's going to take a while. And then everything that's left in the towel, squeeze it out, throw it away. Use a funnel and a ladle to fill sterilized bottles with your cordial. This is ready to drink right away as is, and it will keep in the fridge for up to six weeks. It kind of makes a lot, I'll be honest, but it's really good. If you can't get elderberry flowers, chamomile flowers will work too, although their flavor is very mild and it can get lost in the lemons, and especially once you've added it to champagne. Um, but, you know, you've got so much, you can also drizzle this cordial over fruit salad, you can serve it with berries, you can pour it over sponge cake in a trifle, um, over a lemon sorbet, it's got a lot of uses. Beltane, it's just a time to honor the light half of the year, you know, to rejoice in warmth and passion and fertility, and to celebrate the blessings of the earth, and it's... It's a modern Sabbath with very, very deep historical roots. And so we should, and can and should, feel free to adapt all of these suggestions to our personal practices and to connect with those energies of this very joyful season. Beltane celebrates the arrival of summer and of protective rituals, and it's a fascinating blend of ancient tradition, modern day practices. Basically, Beltane is just a really good time. It's not as heavily laden with meaning in the way that, you know, Yule can be or even that Samhain can sometimes be because we associate that so deeply with our ancestors. But it can be if that's what we want to make it. You know, it's a time to enjoy the weather. It's a time to enjoy one another and to celebrate the fertile season and to petition for protection for ourselves and for our loved ones. And I hope you have a lovely one. We will talk again next week. My name is Eli Rowe. And this has been the Middle-Aged Witch Podcast. May our troubles be less and our blessings be more and nothing but happiness come through our door. The 
information presented is the author's opinion and does not constitute any health or medical advice. The content of this podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any condition or disease. Please seek advice from your healthcare provider for your personal health concerns. Thank you.